we ultimately are the architects of our life and the architects of our soul and and knowing where we stand is important to achieve progress so Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 12, 8, and 7. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my first impressions about the Monk Manual, and I will go through why I have decided to use it for my life planner for the coming year in combination with the Jibun Techo. If you are interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist life in general, you have definitely come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below the video. If you would like to know more about our daily life and just see funny memes and get to know me better, please follow along on Instagram at Project Happy Home. I would love to see you there. I am going to tell you all about the Monk Manual. I first saw this uh, featured on Amanda's Favorites. She has my favorite YouTube channel about planners and planning. I will link her channel in the description box down below. Be sure to check her out. She also has a code um, where you can get some uh, percentage off of the planner. I believe it's 10%, so be sure to check it out. So when I watched the review for the Monk Manual on Amanda's channel, the thing that struck me was how prescriptive it was without being... Um, sort of cloying in its prescriptiveness. I find that a lot of intentionality planners ask questions that I find to be silly. And that's something that I tend to shy away from. I also like the open-endedness of blank pages. So I was actually surprised when I realized that I needed something like this. But in all honesty, my pandemic experience uh, threw me for a loop, you guys. It really has been incredibly isolating and it has shifted my mental state in a way that I don't appreciate. I'm generally a fairly positive person and I am appreciative and full of gratitude and I try to think the right thoughts and all those things. And it, during the pandemic, it sort of became harder and harder to see the good and to be the good and to contribute and to move forward with my personal goals. And so I decided I needed something a little bit more prescriptive than the Hobonichi Cousin. Now I've been an avid Hobonichi Cousin fan for the last six years. I love it because it includes yearly, monthly, weekly, and daily pages. And you can use those daily pages for planning, but what I used them for was mostly journaling. And as the pandemic progressed, I found myself journaling less and less and having less to say. And just the idea of that um, made me feel all sorts of things. I wasn't um, creating in the way that I wanted to be creating. So enter the Monk Manual in combination with the Jibun Techo as my planner system for 2022. Now, the Monk Manual is not a yearly planner in the sense that this does not cover one year. This actually only covers 90 days, so it's the same length as a yearly planner, but it only really covers three months for you. So you have here the beginning of the manual. You have, you know, an area to say when you started. It's undated, so you can start it whenever you like. The book is not secular in the sense that it definitely speaks of God. However, it really only speaks of God when it, when it addresses, I think, Think, what is God teaching me? So you could think of that in any way you wanted. You could think of it as the universe. You could think of it as life. You could think of it as your family, however your life works. Um, the value of this planner really was in the method. And the method they talk about is this PAR method. So you prepare your minds, your hearts, and your schedules. You live through your actions with a sense of freedom, peace, and presence. And then you reflect on what has transpired, what we've learned about ourselves, and what God is doing in our lives. So the whole concept of combining our preparation with our actions and then reflecting upon our progress and how life is impacting on us resonated with me. That is obviously what a lot of us try to do with our planners anyway, but when we are feeling a little bit um, less strong than usual, I think having a nice prescriptive practice to do that in a regular and intentional way um, can be very powerful. So the first section of the planner are the monthly pages. The planner does have three bookmarks here, as you can see, and they are just a, a ribbon bookmark. They're nice and solid. I love the hunter green color. I love that they're all the same color, actually. Um, it gives the planner a really nice aesthetic. I like this camel colored cover of the planner. 
The planner itself has 256 pages, so it is, I mean, a little bit chunky. The covers are hard bound, and you have this little expandable pocket folder at the back. The monthly pages, as I was saying, include a small undated monthly calendar, a prepare priority section, so you could list out your main five priorities for the month, and then you have a monthly check-in, an area to put in your themes. The check-in goes from relationships, physical, spiritual, uh, your work or vocation, your personal growth, and your play. One question you'd like to answer this month, and then there's a reflection section for the end of the month. So you have biggest accomplishments, relationships that you're grateful for, your greatest insights gathered or gained, and then you have a blank dot grid section here where you could sketch or write out your monthly reflections. There's also one change I can make in the next month that will make the biggest impact. So as you can tell, all of these questions are in depth without being sort of new agey <laughs> and I appreciated that so the next section is um, your weekly pages and your weekly pages I feel like are really where this par method this prepare act and reflect method shine because you have your preparing your priorities um, your to-do list your personal growth your relationship growth what you're looking forward to what your biggest accomplishments have been that week, your habit insights, meaningful moments, what is God teaching you? Again, you can make that as secular as you like, and another way that you can improve next week. The habit tracker here just includes one section for habit tracking, though you could take these lines down and make it into a grid and write down more habits if you wanted. But personally, I kind of like the simplicity of this. So if I'm really working on one habit, that might be all I track that week, and the next week I might track something else. Um, or I might try to keep it the same for this 90 days and shift it to something else. Either way, I've been terrible at using habit trackers, so I think less is more in that category. The creators of this planner really talk about the fact that productivity isn't about doing more things, it's about doing the most important things well, and I think that's reflected in the simplicity of their layout and the simplicity of how many questions they're asking and how many habit trackers there are. I think sometimes planners can get so detailed as to become an activity unto itself um, that lacks actual purpose in our real lives. The next section of the planner are the daily pages. Now again, you have 90 daily pages. You have a daily schedule, which is timed out from 6 a.m. all the way to 10. You have your three priorities for the day, what habit you're gonna work on. You have a to-do list, what you're grateful for and what you're looking forward to and ways I can give. There's also a theme for your day, and then there's a reflection section here. Your highlights, when were you at your best, when you felt unrest. I thought this was such an insightful question. When did you feel your best is definitely an important question to ask and, and to reflect upon and to um, build upon, but when you felt unrest is equally as important. I think sometimes we're so busy talking about achieving our level 10 life and being our best selves and getting better at this and that, that sometimes we lose track of the pain we feel and the unrest we feel and the discomfort we are having with how our life is currently. Reflecting on it isn't so much a way of wallowing as it is a way of acknowledging what isn't working and that gives us a chance to ask the question why isn't that working and how can I shift things to make it work better or how can I reflect upon it in an honest way and think about when it might get better on its own or or why it's not or what I can do to make it better so I really love this question and I love that it's in the daily pages so it's not just an overarching unrest it is what in that day gave you unrest? And that is a lot of data gathering for you, right? That is a way for us to reflect on how it is okay for us to have feelings, whether they are positive and negative, but all those feelings are valid. But we ultimately are the architects of our life and the architects of our soul. And, and knowing where we stand is important to achieve progress. So one way I can improve tomorrow is your next question. And again, all of these days continue that way. The color scheme remains the same throughout. The pages are actually 100 GSM, but I think, you know, they are a little bit thicker than that would seem. I haven't done a pen test in here. I generally don't have bleed through issues. 
Um, I imagine a Sharpie might bleed through this or a Sharpie pen, but I think most other things should be fine. You have um, this coral and cream color scheme throughout. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Honestly, I kind of wish that these boxes were like maybe a, a slight mint green or something like that, but I will live. I like that the first priority box is, um, is highlighted for you, so you can definitely make that your most important one. And it just goes on like that. So there is nothing at the end beyond a few dock red pages. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pages. So if you were the type of person to just carry this one planner around, it would work for you as well. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be using the Jibun Techu for my weekly um, schedule maintaining and everything. So when I look at the weekly pages, um, I might actually put these down as my reflective pages pages and use them more as reflection pages here and the growth pages for the to-do list I'm probably going to keep that mostly to my Jibun Techo and for my daily pages though I will definitely be using the to-do list and everything because I will be simply using my Jibun Techo as more of a scheduling kind of device so I really like the monk manual i love the way it feels it's a very elegant planner to carry around with you it is a vegan um, cover so if that's important to you that's good to know if you wanted to see even more details about this planner definitely check out amanda's video on amanda's favorites i will link it in the description box down below as i mentioned as always you guys i really do appreciate your time thank you so much for spending some of it with me and i wish you all the very best day